I'm the Education Coordinator here at Sydney Olympic Park Authority. So welcome to the Armoury Theatre and also to the 2014 Youth Eco Summit. In the theatre with us today, we have some colleagues from Grace Danes High School, Oak Hill College and also Granville Public School. And also a big shout out to the students that are joining us via live stream on Google, um, sorry, via the live feed on YouTube. Today you will get to hear the hard work and dedication from students at Grace Danes High School have put into their World Parks Congress FUSE project. I'd like, now, I'd like to hand over to Dan Nichols from the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service who will explain a bit more about the project and also introduce the students on the stage here. Thank you, Rachel, and good morning, everyone. Our project FUSE is a program developed by the New South Wales National Parks and Wildlife Service to link New South Wales secondary schools with a major conservation or globally significant conservation event happening here in Sydney in just three, three weeks' time. The World Parks Congress is held just once every 10 years, uh, hosted by the IUCN, or the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. The Congress will see conservation agencies like ours, the National Parks and Wildlife Service of New South Wales, uh, park managers, rangers, research scientists, all involved in conservation from around the world, heading to Sydney to discuss and debate issues surrounding park management, protected areas, conservation, uh, and setting the agenda for those issues for the next 10 years. So it's a really significant event for us in, in conservation. In line with stream eight of the Congress, which is the Inspiring a New Generation stream, which has aims of including the voice of young people at the Congress, uh, this program has been developed to, um, as I say, link secondary schools with issues that are being discussed, focused on, uh, and will be reported on at the World Parks Congress. Stream eight of the Congress, as I said, is inspiring a new generation, and that's the stream that Grey Staines High School has been investigating. Research shows us just how important time spent in nature, in the natural world can be at creating emotional connection, connections to the environment. These connections can form the foundations through which we are able to recognise and express our concerns for the health of the environment. Students from Grace Danes High School have been examining, examining the values people place on protected areas, particularly by researching how young people experience and like to engage with the natural environment. Uh, they have reviewed a range of programs with the aim of identifying how to promote greater youth engagement with the natural world. I'd like to introduce Bethany, Megan, Vish, Vishu? Vaishu, my apologies, Asha, TJ and David from Grace Danes High School to talk about their research, outline their inspiring solution and introduce their love story video. Give them a welcome, please. Good morning and hello. My name is Asha Warrington and I'm here today on behalf of the U10 Gifted and Talented Geography class for 2014 at Grace Saints High School. Our school is a comprehensive co-educational high school located in Grace Saints in the metropolitan area of southwestern Sydney. The stream our group has selected is Stream 8, Inspiring a New Generation. The reason we selected this stream is because we can relate to it the most as the leaders of tomorrow and it is our decisions that will have an impact on our natural environment. The research we conducted shows trends from our school community that have proved to be surprising and unpredictable. Our mission is to find out why and try and change their views on our natural environment. IUCN World Parks Congress aims to identify the challenges faced by protected areas and encourage greater community interaction through the next generation and beyond. Our stream investigations intend to link with the work of experts and IUCN WPC interests by sharing this vision and encouraging the engagement of young people with parks, people and the planet. 
We believe that in order to create a relationship with nature, three steps must be taken. The first is awareness. Causing people to be aware of the environment, be aware that the environment is in a critical condition, will then cause people to have emotion towards what we are doing for the environment and cause them to want to make a change. Education is the second step. We inform if we inform people of the dangers and negative impacts society is having on nature, we can then further impact people's emotions and their actions to stop this destruction. The last step in our plan is action. Once people have awareness about the problems associated with the degradation of the environment and are educated in ways which we are able to rectify our mistakes, only then can we start to act upon them. Hence the word action. It is therefore through these three steps that we can start to mend our relationship with nature, educate the younger generation about sustaining the environment, and allow generations to come to have the right and liberty to witness nature's beauty. The aim of our study was to gather as much information as we can and use it to create an inspiring solution to our love story. Our main aim to inspire future generations. To do this, we need to understand young people's perspectives and how they interact with nature and identify powerful influences like technology and social media. Various focus questions were used to develop our investigation. What were your initial thoughts on the environment and how do you perceive nature now? How do you interact with the environment? Do you believe your efforts have an impact on the environment and has technology affected the time you spend outdoors? Approaching the investigation. Our investigation started off with some of us collecting primary data through surveys. The survey group gave out surveys to random students from years 7 to 12. We also had help from our, um, our mentor, Wendy Goldstein, who was guiding us on what we should do for our surveys, such as the questions we should put in and how we should present our data. In preparation of creating our surveys, we investigated different articles and research on work of other communities, looked at the work of experts and IUC and WPC, assessed at the effectiveness of the Habitat app and GAIN, looked at various forms of media to collect data from our, for our background information, such as YouTube videos and TEDx talks like Getting Hooked on Nature by Ben Klasky. Though our imagination and creativity were the main influence for our love story film, some campaigns and videos such as hashtag no walls also influenced us and when we were making a video later on. These sources helped us understand that technology and social media can be used as powerful tools to inspire young people to get outside more and interact with nature. Through these secondary sources, we, th we found that there is a staggering decrease of children who spend time outdoors in comparison to one generation ago. Street games are being replaced by technology and multimedia games. Despite the positive benefits of interacting with nature, fewer children are spending time outdoors. As well as exploring various forms of media, we looked at other secondary data like reports to collate a sufficient amount of background information to base our survey questions on and also form our hypothesis. We looked at reports like National Tree Days Climbing Trees and Parks and Other Green Environments. Then we created a survey that questioned students on their views and opinions about the environment. Based on this secondary data, background information and prior knowledge, we predicted that as people grew older, they would become more aware of the current state of the environment and they would care for the environment even more. Raise your hand if you think this is true. This is because the information we analysed has shown us that ch as children grow older, they gain awareness of current environmental issues, meaning they should care more for the state of the environment as a result of the awareness. To reach out and spread our message, we use social media platforms like Facebook. We contacted the Parramatta Sun newspaper so that we could reach a wider audience and let our local communities know about our goal to inspire new generations through IUCN WPC. We wanted to ask questions to students that would reflect how they, would, how they perceive nature. These questions range from open-ended to multiple choice to maximize the diversity of the answers the students gave us. 
These questions were also designed to help understand the relationship that youth today have with their environment. This will help us, this will help us assist in making our inspiring solution video more engaging and relevant to our young audience. Creating surveys online in an application such as SurveyMonkey would have made the process of collecting data much easier. However, it might have meant that the number of students surveyed may decrease if the students were not bothered to spend time to do them online. For example, when the students, the students would be reluctant to take the survey and answer the questions properly, properly if they had to waste a lot of time by going to an area with computers or logging on at school. We investigated, we investigated much secondary research through many forms of media, like articles and videos. We, by conducting our own primary research through surveys, we collated valuable information vital for our understanding and knowledge of how young students at our school think about nature. We then analyzed this data in several forms, including report and graph form. These processes were quite time consuming, but they were essential in drawing our conclusions to help us fully understand the relationship between our younger generation and nature. Are you concerned about the environment? Raise your hands if you are. Okay, as shown on the two graphs over here, um, we can see that 63% of the students surveyed are concerned about the environment as opposed to the other 37%. How often do you guys spend time outdoors? Raise your hands if you spend it every day. Good. So. The majority of the students stated that they spend time outdoors every day. However, 25% stated that they spend time outside only a few weeks, a week, few times a week or less. Have you participated in any of the following experiences? Who's been camping? Okay. Who has been to the beach? I guess that'll be everyone. Yeah. We were astonished to see that the number of people who had not participated in a number of ordinary outdoor experiences. Over a quarter of the people surveyed claimed that they had not been camping. Over a fifth of the students had never been bushwalking or climbed a tree either. Do you think you had a stronger relationship with nature when you were younger? A majority of the students believed that they had a stronger relationship with nature when they were younger, but a large number of students also disagreed or stated that they were unsure. Do you feel you lost touch in nature as a result of technology? We were also surprised to see a large amount of students who had disagreed when asked whether or not social media and technology had impacted their relationship with the environment. Would you prefer to spend time outdoors or on social media and using technology? Regardless of their age, most students from every year said that they would prefer to spend time outdoors than on technology and social media, with the exception of our Year 9 class. Trends show that, a year, that years 8 and 10 had an equal or almost equal amount of students preferring technology or nature. The trends we picked up were surprising and intriguing. We found out that parents did not have an influence on a majority of students' time outdoors, opposite to our predictions. However, trends through age groups also show that media and technology impact an adolescent's life more as they grow older. This shows us how older teenagers are more aware but spend less time outdoors. Technology helps them understand current issues. However, it is also responsible for distracting the young people. We are surprised to see that our hypothesis was completely opposite to the actual results. We predicted that as students became older, they gained more awareness on current issues concerning the environment and developed a more concerned attitude regarding these issues. The most surprising trend in the survey was that as people got older, they became less concerned about the natural environment. We discovered that despite the fact that they gained more awareness, they seemed less in touch with nature, spent less time outdoors, and had fewer interactions with the environment in comparison to younger students. This means that as people grow older, their relationship with nature weakens, even though they are aware of its implications and consequences. 
Stream 8 is about inspiring our future generations, our younger generations. This is arguably the most important step in conserving and protecting our sustainable environment for the next generation. How are they going to learn about relevant issues today and in the future without inspiring them, without engaging them? Just stating fact after fact is not going to help us intrigue young people and help them fall in love with nature. The world is in their hands in the future and that is why we chose Stream 8. It is the most relevant to us today. As young people, we are fascinated, we are curious, we want to have adventures, and we want to explore the world. And that is what inspired us to choose Stream 8. We can do many things to slow down the degradation of nature caused by all-consuming humans. We can run campaigns, we can spread awareness, we can educate young people and as our future leaders. But there is still one more step above all of these that is vital for strengthening our relationship with the environment. It's to fall in love with nature. We can't just urge people to learn about nature. We need to urge people to go outside and discover it in, um, themselves. We can raise awareness on issues and destruction. We can educate people of all the wonderful things about nature. But it is our emotional connection with nature that ties it all together and encourages us not just to learn about nature, but also to discover something magical and really understand it. So now it is, is the time to urge young people to go outside, to discover something amazing, something wonderful, to discover a magical world. Now is the time to go outside and feel the summer breeze in your hair, to feel the sun, sun against your face. Now is the time to feel the crunch of the leaves beneath your feet, to smell the sweet scent of rain and flowers carried in the wind. Now is the time to wake up, to reunite with Mother Nature, to really fall in love once again, because nature is calling, and nature is calling for all of us. Thank you. Wow, thank you Grace Staines High for that really interesting presentation. It's not finished? No. no. Oh, sorry. Okay, we might uh, have a bit of a discussion while we line the queue the video up and we'll have a look at the love story video in just a moment. But a mountain of work, guys, and really wonderful uh, presentation. Another round of applause, folks. Uh, and interestingly, your hypothesis disproved uh, in terms of what you were hoping would happen, the more information people have got, the more they would be concerned. So, um, as you say, what's missing and hopefully we'll sh shortly see the film. So, did you come to any conclusions as to why in that nine, ten, year nine, ten sort of age, uh, at that sort of age, people's interest appears to wane and or, or, or to lessen and other, is it simply because other uh, opportunities, technology get in the way, or, or is it just not cool to be involved with um, going out in the bush? Any ideas on what makes that change when that occurs? Um, it's probably because there's more opportunities and more like responsibilities in terms of schooling and studies, so that's why maybe 
they might not have as much time to go outside. Also, we found that technology was a major factor as they got more, more immersed in social media and um, just technology in general, we found that that was a major reason why they um, had a le less connection with nature. And, and I guess people um, have to explore that and find out uh, how much time they want to devote to it. So is, would the idea be to um, try and maintain an interest through that age group or to try and reignite the interest in the environment as people have spent time exploring technology and then perhaps as the 11 12s in your survey did start to take an interest again in the environment is there is there some sense in that maybe and how do we go about that reigniting of, of that interest with the older students or older people I think it would be about determining what is distracting them and what's taking them away because once we figure that out we can then move towards a way of fixing that pro fixing those problems. I think you're quite young and you're 7 and 8 and then you're 11 and 12 you're getting older, 9 and 10 is that sort of mid, don't know what's going on sort of stage so just figure out what the problem is. Okay. Do you any questions from out here on the floor? Anyone with a question? What are the benefits of spending time in the environment or natural places? What are the benefits of spending time in natural places? Anyone like to offer some of those opportunities? Have you ever gotten that feeling whenever you go outside that you are enjoying it? So whenever you see green, you see, you enjoy it, okay? So whenever you see a tree, you like it. Whenever you see leaves, animals, okay? Animals are something like that, um, you know, makes me want to go outside. So zoos or national parks, that's why I like to go outside because it's like interesting. Is there another question? What was the most surprising finding from your survey? Well, as we previously stated, um, our most surprising find was probably that the older students were educated on all the concerns in the environment. They were completely aware of all the current issues, but they had a le like less of a connection with nature than the younger students, even though they were more aware of what concerns and issues um, it's going through. So that was our most surprising find, finding that even though they were completely aware they had less connection with nature, um, the older students. One of the things in the survey that interested me was the fact that in terms of the environmental problems that were highlighted, most people saw litter as the major environmental problem. And sure, it can be unsightly and it can damage local areas, but surely there are, are bigger environmental issues in terms of climate change, habitat loss, so are those messages not getting through or why do you think that most people identified litter as, as a major problem? We feel that it's more visible and it affects us individually. However, the climate change, it's not visible, it's, not, it's affecting us but not, it's not right there. Also, um, our school and the community, they raise awareness of the litter and they, we have the influences of the community to enforce that litter is a massive problem. Just like Bethany said, I think a lot of the messages about the environment get through to children, but with school and the community, they're a lot stronger. People around them, people they know, people they like, people they trust. So it's sort of things like school, you always have initiatives to clean um, in the community, like Clean Up Australia Day, it's always there, always the message. So maybe getting a lot of those other messages in, into those environments would help as well. Are there any other questions from the audience? Yeah. How do you, uh, how do you get interest in environment? Well, the video, what's the key message on how do you get people, how are you going to call them? I am, um, I think that's the beauty of nature, it's an individual's interpretation of it and so no one can tell you what will make you interested, it's how you perceive it and 
something about it will make you interested. It's nothing which someone can tell you. You'll find it yourself. All right, one more question. Um, what age group did you find that uh, was the um, most one that did spend time in the environment? That, that did spend time in the environment? That didn't. Oh, that didn't. We found that um, mo the younger students, so year seven and eight, spent the most time in the environment, whilst years 11 and 12 spent the least. And years nine and 10 were um, sort of like the in-between stage where students started to um, be less connected to their environment. So we found that um, the older the students got, the less time they spent in the environment and were connected to the environment. One more? Yeah, I'm oh, oh, sorry, we're getting carried away here. Why is it so important to have a connection or bond with nature? I think, well, nature is all around us. We live on the earth. Nature is everywhere. So you've got to sort of, you know, you can't just pretend it doesn't exist. We live off the earth, not as much as I think we used to, but we do. And it's important to recognise there's so much out there, so many things to learn, so many things to do. So, yeah. Without nature, humans can't live. So that's why it is one of the most important things why we need a bond with nature. It's like having a bond with your mother. That's why we call nature, mother nature. So you need to have a bond in terms of that to understand what nature really is. Um, what was your favourite part of this job? Nice question. What was the most uh, interesting, exciting part of the these research? Um, well, I found that the teamwork was really good. I made a lot of friends doing this um, as an individual. But I, I worked specifically on the research team and I found that at the end when we'd finally collated all the data and finally entered our report that that was my my happiest moment personally. <laughs> um, but um, I think probably finally just being here and getting this end result of having a video and a presentation and finding out the data we know now. So I think that is one of the greatest things that have come out of this. Um, I also loved the filming part because we were outdoors for most of the filming and we were just we were just having fun. We didn't like we were trying different shots, we were trying different things, we had new ideas. But in doing that we had a lot of experiences outdoors. Like um one example is um next door we had <laughs> the, there's like two ponies out there and then we like it, it they came out to us when we were filming and then No, yeah, exactly. Which is a pretty good transition. Well, let's have a look at the film. Uh, uh, the Love Story video protect, produced by Grace Dane students to... Uh, uh, yep. An updated version here. Got it? Okay. I think we've got it. I think we'll have to go with this one. We'll save that one for the World Parks Congress. Let's go.
Well, thank you so much, Grace Jane High School, for your really interesting and moving research and presentation. Please put your hands together again for Asha, Megan, Bethany, David, Vashu and Tajaswa from Grace Jane High for their amazing efforts. You can find out more about their project and others on the WPC FUSE website. Thank you again and enjoy the rest of your day.